What's up everyone, I'm Dunmere, Top 100 Overwatch player, and I have a settings guide for you guys so that you can have all the new little things figured out and we can talk about the competitive advantages. So, starting off with the video settings here, you know, most of it's pretty standard, just full screen, best match, whatever your frame rate and your um, and your aspect ratio is. Perfect, you know, that's all going to be standard, just let it do what it does usually. Um, obviously, if you have a, it sometimes will go below the frame rate that you're on, but yeah. So. Um, for dynamic render scale, I don't suggest putting that on. It basically just changes the, you know, the render scale like this dynamically based on what your computer supposedly wants, but it makes it inconsistent. I don't think it really is going to affect your um, performance as much, so I wouldn't use it. For frame rate, just I have it up at 400. I have a 240 hertz monitor, so that's plenty. You do want to have it so it can go above whatever your the limit of your monitor is, but um, yeah, so 400 is good. Like I said, you do, there is like some very minute like input lag or like visual lag things that can occur even if you're going above or if you're not like going above um, above your frame rate too high. So just letting it kind of be free is nice. Maximum frames is really good. I don't suggest using VSync because it does add some input lag to, or I guess not really input lag, but it does add some lag to the visuals. So the stuff that you're seeing is a little tiny, tiny bit late and that can affect things. Um, maybe if your computer is pulling really close to whatever frame rate you're getting anyway, and or like whatever, like let's say you have like a 144 hertz monitor, if you're getting like 130 average, then maybe VSync might be good just because it'll like make it more consistent, especially if you're jumping up and down between it. But the lag is also a thing, so you have to keep that in mind. Don't use triple buffering, always use reduced buffering. Um, Nvidia Reflex enabled plus boost is, is ideal, so use that. For graphics quality, if you're going for all frames, just turn them low. The only thing that I, um, well, I guess the first section of things I should talk about here is like the image sharpening. It's a new setting. So as you can see right here, apply changes, I have it like maximum sharpened. It looks really crisp, right? Even though I'm only using 80% render. So if I was to go in here and I was to change this down to like absolutely, you know, not using it, you can see it looks a lot softer. So, um, you know, this is kind of something that will help you counteract some of your render scale stuff. Like, for example, if I was to knock this down to like 50%, it's looking very fuzzy, you know, very, 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 very fuzzy. So if we use this to sharpen it, it's going to help with some of that. Like this is, this is like, you know, almost playable now, even though we're on 50% render scale. So this could be a little trick you could use to get a lot more frames out of it. I wouldn't go too far in it unless you need to though, so I'm going to use mine at about, you know, point, eh, let's say like 0.5 and of course I'm going to put my render scale back up to 80. So, for the other thing I was going to say, everything else should just be low or off, you don't really need it, to be honest. It's just going to add a lot of um, reduction in frame rate and that's not good in Overwatch. But shadow detail is questionable. I wanted to use shadow detail just because of getting a little bit of tiny information, just like put a lowest setting, but get a tiny bit of information about where people are based on seeing their shadow. Um, like, you know, like being able to see like this guy's shadow as he's going through here. And like, let's just say I'm, you know, hiding and I like can see the wall where the shadow is going. It can give you a little bit of extra information, but it's also going to reduce your frames a little bit. And it for some reason adds these glares like this. So, you know, if I'm walking around here and I like pull up around this corner and like, oh, that's really distracting, you know, or like on Gibraltar, I'm sure it's going to be rough. So um, it's probably better to turn it off because as soon as you turn this off. No more glare. And that's this is a better, you know, playing experience. This is not anything distracting you. So that's up for you guys to decide. Moving on from here, um, details, turn on these on. You know, lets you see stats about your group, frame rate, and all that stuff. For this, um, damage effects, damage effects is important to lower too. Make sure, or yeah, you know, like this will help you just not like it doesn't usually feel like that big of a deal. Like I'll show you, it's not really that different. Um, like if I'm if I'm clicking on this person, it's just showing a little bit of extra like a little bit of extra blood and nonsense that's going in front of its head or whatever. It's oil, <laughs> you know, because it's a robot, but. This will, um, when you're really up close on somebody, like make it not as bad. And there's nothing obstructing your vision when you're doing that. So that's a little bit more of an advantage you can get. 
Uh, moving on from here for sound, you can use this uh, like Dolby Atmos. I don't because I like the way mine sounds without it. Um, but play around with the setting and see if it helps you hear footsteps better and stuff like that. There's also like, you have to be careful because some headphones have this automatically in, um, getting surround sound. And then some have like, like Windows has an automatic thing that can be in. So you have to make sure they're not like counteracting each other because it can sound really, really weird. So, um, play sound when enemy eliminated, play sound when teammates eliminated. It sounds weird to me because it's the eliminations from like deathmatch, but you should turn these on just so you can get extra information and get used to it. Voice chat, you know, nothing really special there. Controls. Um, obviously, I, I don't really want to go too far to controls because mine are kind of wonky. Like, as you can see, I use like my side button for melee and I use my my scroll wheel press for my ultimate. <laughs> so that's a little bit weird for sure. But there's definitely like some intricacies you can use. Like I said, I like to bound I like to bind keys onto my mouse just so that I can have more movement. But you really just want to make sure that you're going to have the ability to ping. So I'm moving my ping on to C so I can hit it with my thumb just so I can be pinging consistently. Because pinging is going to be really, 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 really powerful. Um, there's just some interesting little settings you're going to have to play around with too. Lower your, like, you know, exactly see exactly how you want to do with this sort of stuff. Ping opacity needs to be knocked down a little bit. You don't want it to be so blocking things. Apparently it doesn't want to go down. <laughs> 69. Cool. Um, knocking down like enemy ping sensitivity and stuff like that is pretty good. It just allows you to be more, more um, specific with the pings. I'll press speed. I'll also say it knocked down. And uh, this, this allows you to be more like, don't go too far where it's just, it's just nonsense. But um, this allows you to be a little bit more controlled about what's going on through here. <clears throat> Definitely always, always have show friendly outlines. Um, and textual. I'm pretty sure this is going to be. Okay, we can't see their health bars. That makes sense. That's a different setting than what it used to be. So you're going to see through walls anyway, but um, yeah, so you do, you do definitely want to have those on. You don't want to have it set up so that you can't see your teammates health. It's, it's very important. Like as a healer, yeah, it's automatically on, but um, anyway, so we play spectate, whatever. Communication, like I said, um, just make sure you have that ping set up properly. That's really, really important. The key bindings are, are you know, I don't want to go through every character, but some characters do have very specific things that you might want to mess around around with. Like Widowmaker has specific like aim down sight sensitivities. Ash has very specific aim down sight sensitivities. Mercy has, you know, some weird settings about like guardian angel targeting. And all that sort of stuff um like whether you like targeting it your beam sensitivity stuff like that any sort of sensitivities like this you want to lower them um then any sort of these things you just want to mess around with them and find out what you like doing with them like i said i don't want to i don't want to go too hard into this character so they're too hard to like any of the characters and and figure out all the settings right now but it'll take too long <laughs> um for gameplay something you do want to turn on is enable high precision mouse input so this will let you aim more consistently, like it'll have basically more ticks and allow you to aim more within your, uh, like more specifically to what you're actually aiming at or trying to aim at anyway. So um, for HUD, again, play sound when enemy eliminated. Yeah, keep those on. Always have kill feed display, always kill cam or, you know, kill cam. It always skip. Uh, it, it's fine, but look at it sometimes. This is whatever, 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 whatever. For these, um, for ability timer, knock down like 70%. It'll still let you see it, but let you see through it too. Waypoint opacity, respawn opacity. You want to walk that, knock those down too. 70% are pretty good, but you can knock it down more if you're, you know, you don't really need to see the objective and stuff like that. You don't like worry about that too much. Um, and yeah, social stuff is all kind of whatever. There is another set of settings here that are pretty important to talk about. We have camera shake, turn that to reduced, and HUD shake, turn it off. Mini movements, whatever, that's a personal thing. Um, there's nothing really else here. It's just the uh, the ability to like jump right here. Like my HUD doesn't move as much when I land. But on the other setting, it like makes it jiggle a little bit. And that's just that's just not too good. So 
yeah make sure to make sure to turn that to off all right so i did decide to go through and just talk about the slight little abilities that each character has that need to be looked at so not all of them actually have it but a lot of them have things like toggle to toggle their ability sort of thing or hold things that's personally that's like 100 percent preference um, I don't like toggling. I usually do hold the boost on a lot of things, although I've been used to not doing that on Diva, so I don't have it. But it is an option, and it's like that part's just purely like, you know, whatever you like doing. But on characters like um, Wrecking Ball, same sort of thing. Characters actually like, um, let me get to it. All right, guys. Um, Zarya, same sort of thing. You're going to want to have like a lowered protective barrier sensitivity sort of thing. It's personally, it's, it is kind of preference, but the lower you get, the more aim it's going to require, but the better accuracy you'll have with aiming at specifically what you want to aim at, which can be really, really good. So, um, Zarya has this, Zarya has the same sort of thing. Sigma has a little sense little thing for reload recalls barrier and toggle barrier. like, again, it's preference doesn't really fundamentally change anything. Ash aim sensitivity. Um, I don't like having recoil recovery aim composition. I think it kind of. It just makes it so you can't move your your mouse as you're shooting exactly. Like it won't let you pull it down. It's kind of weird. But I don't use it. Um, that's my sensitivity. You know, I don't really. I I haven't played around with them too much, but that's what I've been pretty comfortable with. Um, same sort of thing. No recoil recovery. Grappling hook lowered. Same thing. So Ash has that. Woodmaker has that. Soldier seventy six has a hold to sprint ability. You can do that one. Um, Soldier doesn't know anything. I thought she did for a second. Let's see what else has something. Junkrat has a Rift Tower automatically climbs walls. I wouldn't use that. It gives you less control. You basically want to be going for more control constantly. Um, and then, like I said, again, duplicate requiring target confirmation, nano base requiring target confirmation. Those are personal options. They do take more time. They do make you more accurate. But then again, just using a higher duplicate sensitivity will probably solve that problem anyway. Um, yeah, same thing for hold for flight. It's personal. It's just personal choice. So, you know, I don't want to give you guys too hard of a preference there. It's just whatever gives you more control. With Kiriko, same sort of thing. Like how sensitive you want the healing Ofuda to be, how sensitive you want the good stuff to be. Toggle healing Ofuda. Um, when you press this button, it'll like shoot all of them. This like, like when I'm like this. Let's show you guys what it looks like. I can only I can shoot one at a time. It's, it is more control. You know, I would, I would say to use it, to be honest, like I can choose to only hit two. Um, I need to see how it affects like, like sh attacking. Cause I can, you know, shoot two and like, oh, I need to attack. Oh, you know, cause I'm getting rolled by something. So let me, let me go into the settings and see how that actually affects things. I should test this beforehand, but you know, I guess you guys get to see what it does. So. So it um, it doesn't really end up affecting anything because you can cancel with the primary fire anyway. Double. It's basically really just like. But you know, I still I still wouldn't recommend using it just because, you know, say you want to split your healing between like person A, this guy and this guy. Like this, doing this is gonna be less consistent than um, being able to hold and do it exactly how you want it to be. So it's a little bit less accurate. It doesn't change things too much, but I would recommend just doing hold. Um, unless you feel like it's affecting your aim. If you feel like it's affecting your aim a lot, it's whatever. It, like that, you know, that is something you can consider. The Ofuda do recharge really quickly, so it's not like you need to be like, oh, I'm wasting all my ammo on one. So, again, I would still recommend using the, the hold version unless it's affecting your aim. So, let's see. Um, if there's anyone else had something. Vinyana has the same sort of accuracy thing for its... Uh, for its um its harmony discord orb lucio has some other interesting things hold to crossfade hold to crossfade is uh is technically better just because when you do get like shatter or something like that it'll automatically go to it'll go to the healing um but i have not used that so i don't use it allow backwards wall ride always have that wall jump on release um that's a fine option to have to for mercy um there like the settings there's different different settings allow you to do different things toggle beam connection is objectively better 
just because you don't have to let go and then go on to someone else, which will take a slight bit of time on the healing. Um, but these prefer beam targets, Hoggle Guardian Angel or not, um, are very like, they allow you to do different things basically. Because basically whether you're like, you know, what you're facing exactly or going to your beam target allows you to look around. It allows you to have like more control with this, with facing target, but this allows you to um, like look around more and do stuff. So it's really just completely personal, personal choice. There's no like, like hard what's better or not. If you're looking for some more Overwatch 2 content, then make sure to check out these videos I have right here. Like I said, I'm a top 100 Overwatch player, so I have lots of videos and things to share with you guys.